The following video has been approved by the Jetty marketing team. The video has been rated Jetty. The following video may not be suitable for all viewers. G'day, mate. Welcome to Dyson Sphere with me, Jetty. Today, we're going to be talking about Deuterium. Now, I've been streaming DSP over on Twitch, and I've had many people swing by and ask me, how does the fractionator work? How do you get Deuterium? And what do you need it for? So let me explain some of the basics for you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Dyson Sphere videos like this. You'll need deuterium in small amounts to start with, mainly for the fuel rods for the mini fusion power station for a sweet, sweet nine megawatts of power each station. Later on, you'll need deuterium in larger amounts for strange matter to unlock the gravitational lenses to finally make some warp cores. So as your progress in the game continues, your need for deuterium also increases. But their main use is going to be powering your mecha to fly around planet to planet and especially when you start warping the system to system you'll be burning through power faster than you ever have before each fuel rod holds 600 megajoules of power and also gives your mecha a 300 percent bonus to get you supercharged quickly you'll also need deuterium for strange matter which is on its way to making the warp cores themselves with all that out of the way, how do we go about making this stuff? Well, there are two options, one for early game and one for late game. And there is a way to also harvest deuterium in the mid game, depending on your luck with the RNG gods. First, we have the fractionator, which costs just steel, stone, glass, and some processors. Now, when we pop these down, they have two inputs, well, an input, an output, and a second output. So what we need to do is we need to actually pass hydrogen through the system and the deuterium will come out the front. Let me demonstrate with this one here. Now, the catch with these guys is they actually use 720 kilowatts worth of power for a 1% chance of deuterium. So you have to really build a number of these or get them up and running very early on. They are really, really easy to set up and you, they can just be tacked onto your main hydrogen line or we can set them up a little bit more effectively with a loop. Now, don't forget the faster you pass the hydrogen through these systems, uh, the more effective they're going to be. So here we have one with a Mark 1 belt, which as you can see holds about six, six hydrogen in, in here, which is going to eventually, occasionally pop out one piece of deuterium. If we take this up to a Mark 2 belt, we can see that this guy is going to actually have 12 in here at all times. So it has a, a higher, a more frequent chance. Not a higher chance, a more frequent chance of outputting deuterium. And then finally, we have a Mark III version, which is going to actually hold 30 in the system. So going to be a lot faster, a lot more effective, and it's really, really going to pump out the deuterium over time. So very much start with the Mark 1 belts, work your way up to the Mark 2 as soon as you can, and then as soon as you've got access to the Mark 3 belts, definitely upgrade your systems. But this only gets you up and running early game. As you progress, your needs will also increase. So expand your fraction and build. One not enough, build two. Two not enough, build four. Four not enough, build 40. Also remember, these little machines are using 720 kilowatts each. So be warned as you expand your builds. Remember, the earlier you have this system up and running, the more, hydro, uh, more hydrogen you feed into the system, the more deuterium you can actually have for when you really need it. Once you've progressed through the tech tree and you've unlocked warp cores, warp cores, I strongly recommend going out and exploring the universe for rare resources, including deuterium. It can be gathered by the orbit collector on gas giants. Be warned, the gathering rate is incredibly slow at generally 0, 0.0 something per second. Uh, but yes, they can be gathered by a wonderful uh, orbit collector, but even fully upgraded, it's not going to collect quickly. There is ways around this, just, you know, put down a few of them. So you've gotten over the mid game hump and you're heading towards end game and as you start making both warp cores as well as the gravitational matrix your needs have increased and this leads us to the miniature particle collider 
these use way more power at 12 megawatts each if I can actually not have a power blackout right at the moment uh, but they also consume 10 hydrogen for 5 deuterium out so twice the hydrogen input and vastly more power but a constant output rather than the 1% chance we had with the fractionator honestly build your fractionator build never ever retire it is a wonderful wonderful build keep it running forever and then only add the particle colliders when you need them when when you when you have the excess power and you have the excess hydrogen you're looking for a way to burn those two materials off now after i've given you all that information i think it's time we actually built a build together because your deuterium you're going to have more than one belt of hydrogen feeding into it. You're going to have a number of belts actually coming in. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to have all the outputs fed in the correct order to make sure you prioritize the system correctly. So we're going to start off with our, our bare basics. We have an interstellar logistics system, which is bringing in deuterium via, the, via a remote demand straight in and into my belt with all my storage tanks and then off to the deuterium belt where all my deuterium has to go. Next up, we're going to have some fractionators. And um, I have allocated... Whoop, wrong ones. That was, those ones. I've allocated sort of this space towards getting all my deuterium up and running. So we're going to start with the fractionators. I want to sort of squeeze them in hard up against that belt. And we want to build them as close to one another as possible. Don't forget, we're going to have to get a hydrogen belt through all of these. So we want to really, really squeeze them in. And... As long as you build less than 100, everything's perfectly fine. So we want to bring our output from our very first one and run it along. And I actually want to sideload it into that belt. So this is going to prioritize this belt first and then out of our fractionators second. Okay, after we've got that up and running, we can take our N1, uh, put its neighbor right in front. And we're just going to double up our build. So, and then before we go too much further, we're going to want a iron plate. Uh, yes. All right, let me grab an iron plate. We need an iron plate for a splitter. And I want to put a splitter here. I'm going to ta hit tab to switch the pattern. And I want this pattern. Yes, that pattern looks like the best one. Okay, so this is going to let us bring in materials at different heights and output at different heights. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, our hydrogen out from the bottom into our first fractionator. And we're just going to bring this whole line through all of them one at a time. And when it gets to the end, I'm actually going to bring it out and bring it into our next row. And build that all the way through and wait for the bots to catch up. Next up, we're going to need our hydrogen. Now, honestly, I want to bring in my hydrogen either on the bottom port or on the top port here at the rear. So we're going to reroute that hydrogen uh, to there and then into there. And if we click on the splitter, I want to prioritize uh, that as the output and we're going to prioritize this side as the input when we get that far so next thing we have to do is definitely hook up all our outputs now these are obviously going to take just a second and as you can see we already have deuterium leaving the system so that's our first step now this is our row of how many row two four six eight ten twenty okay we're going to start our second row because as long as i have less than a hundred in my loop the loop will run perfectly fine so we're going to take this straight up to 40. I want my output belt next. Which we're going to bring... You, hang on. You have... Whoop. You have to come out to there, down to there, down to there. So that belt goes to there. As you can see, we're starting to get very, very tight. We'll continue our belts through all these and then again whoop, again add another one on the end and double the whole system again okay and grab whoop, grab our belts now, I am using Mark III belt, as this is going to be the fastest way, and also be, as I said during the, during the earlier half of the video, um, 
the the most profitable or, or, or the highest conversion rate mm, not highest conversion rate because we're getting materials through the build faster it will output faster that's correct yes it doesn't change the percentage they still only have a one percent chance but because we're processing not a hundred per minute but a thousand per minute um, obviously we're gonna have a increased output uh, so we're gonna hook up all our output belts and obviously the ones on the left need power But we'll fix that up in a sec and then once again. I want to take my hydrogen and I want to loop it uh, Okay, we're gonna bring it there and then I'm gonna bring that up and above and back in uh, and We want to have an input priority input on this side and as we can see my hydrogen is dead But that's perfectly fine because uh, we have or I have a way to bring in hydrogen uh, demand with where's some robots have 15 robots okay so we're gonna bring in some hydrogen from here as well now when it comes to these guys really it doesn't matter where the hydrogen comes into that splitter so we're gonna tab across to hydrogen I can go under all of that I hope I can get into this build yeah, we can use we can use a half half a tile up. Go away, go away, go away, go away, go away, like that. Cool. All right. Uh, we obviously. Oh no, this side doesn't have power. That's why it's broken. Mm, you in the middle don't have power. Okay. Now we can't. You can use and no, we can't use. Okay, we're gonna use another substation here. And a substation there that should power up everything what went wrong there we go no everything's powered they're all running and that should feed the hygiene in as fast as possible now the idea is after the autosave is we're intentionally going to feed hydrogen in from this side so we want our hydrogen to once it exits the system they're still power firing up bump 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 this guy will fire up any seconds there we go I want to make sure that we're definitely feeding this hydrogen back into the loop. We don't want to uh, overdo our loops, so to speak, okay, and then have that pass all the way through the system. And as you can see, we're producing a decent amount of deuterium already. Now, this is just a loop of 40. You could double this out to 80 and even take it all the way out to 100. You could run 100 of these off, uh, off potentially one belt without a problem. It means 100% of the hydrogen fed in should convert across the deuterium. So, in theory, you can take the loop up to 100. Haven't been tested, but in theory, it's possible. Okay, next up, we're going to go with our uh, colliders. Uh, particle collider. Uh, we're going to set the recipe to that one. And... Uh, actually, we might slide it over just a little bit to make sure I have definitely enough room. Uh, set your recipe and same story I'm going to run the belt out first there we go uh, one two oh, three four five okay that's a start and then we'll do five on the other side as well now, about 12 of these will chew a full Mark III belt of hydrogen. So you have been warned, you can't you can't real, really go excessive on these. So, uh, out, output, we want to sideload again. So what's going to happen is we're going to have priority from our interstellar logistics station. Then any gaps in that belt are going to be fed by our fractionators. And then finally, any gaps gaps left over, actually we can feed that in there, are going to be fed by the mini, mini particle accelerators. Yes. Yes, these things. Okay. Miniature particle collider. There we go. I was almost there. Okay, we're also going to need to feed these guys, guys with a belt of hydrogen. Uh, now, obviously our, our first belt of 30 hydrogen is fairly well used up. There's not a lot left over. So we're going to have to have separate belts of hydrogen for these guys normally by the time you get to this late of the game you have plenty of hydrogen and in my case i actually have plenty of hydrogen inside the logistic stations so if i put a one of them there so you stop complaining we can 
Uh, ideally, I'd use Mark III sorters, but I don't seem to have enough on me, so we need to double up with two Mark IIs, because these are going to pre... Mm, actually, no, they didn't, no, don't use hydrogen that fast each. Whatever, we'll try one. We'll try one. Uh, do all, in all our inputs, and squeeze our outputs together. there because we're off by tile. Okay, uh, can I delete that belt to make my life a little bit easier? We'll raise you up a tile, take you down a tile. We'll then put in, actually we've already got hydrogen right here. So let's run another belt uh, of hydrogen at the ground level. Uh, that belt of hydrogen doesn't exist anymore. Go away. Belt tidies up at the same time. Alright, let me just gymnastic these belts across and, uh, and then we'll be right back. Alright, so with that gymnastics done, we can now plug in that hydrogen belt there and that hydrogen belt there. We should fire these systems up. Now, I am a little bit short on power, but that's entirely besides the point. I couldn't be bothered trying to fix that before getting this video out to you guys. And as you can see, any new deuterium is coming in and it's filling in any gaps. Now, because we only have a loop of... Oops. Because I only have a loop of 40 here, uh, rather than 60, 80, 100... I, I'm not producing as much deuterium as I'd like, but over here we are filling in any extra gaps with running the mini, miniature particle colliders, and as I said, I can run about 12 of these off a single belt. Wow, they're loud. Okay, so I run about 12 of these off a single belt, so I could almost double that off the hydrogen I'm currently feeding into this system. Now, because we're talking about th potentially three or four full belts of hydrogen, you can't really use splitters to prioritize them. You're much better off using splitters to prioritize how your deuterium is fed into your network and into your system. As for production stats, if we find deuterium somewhere in this list, mm -hmm. uh, in the last one minute, we can see we're making about 900 per minute. I'm only consuming 700, so we're definitely storing some of that somewhere. So that's not bad for a fairly small, moderate build. Um, obviously, the more fractionators you use, more efficient you're going to be with both your hydrogen and with your power. Uh, and the mini miniature particle glide as well, they've taken my power down to 50%. So they're a little bit power hungry. But with all that said, I'm going to thank you guys so much for watching the video. I am going to say to you, if you have any more questions, you have any more queries, by all means, come jump on our Discord. And Discord has many, 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 many Dyson Sphere players, um, all with various skills uh, that are happy to help one another out. We've also been posting a lot of screenshots in there of different things we're learning throughout the game. At the same time, if you're new here, well, if you learned something from the video, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button. And if you're new here, would you do me a favor? Would you click the subscribe button on the way out? And with all that said, I'm going to invite you guys, whilst you're watching the outro screen, to have a look at the playlist. Have a look at the playlist up on your screen. It has a bunch of Dyson Sphere tutorial videos. I really, really hope that you can find them helpful, find them enjoyable. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Alright, bye.